Just days ago, images like this were circulating across social media, causing chaos for the weather enterprise in the Ohio Valley. But now the models that were showing those historic snow totals are backing off and less snow is possible. Or is it? Is the storm all hype or could it be historic? Or is it going to be somewhere in between? Find out in today's episode of the Bluegrass Weather Report. Meteorologist Shane Smith, glad to be with you on this Sunday, December 18th, 2022. Hope you're doing well. And we got a special episode here. We're on the road, but I did want to drop in for a quick update talking about the potential for winter weather leading up to Christmas. We should be dry up until Thursday, but then things get wild. Let's take a look at what the models are showing. So here we have the GFS model, and it is showing low pressure developing Wednesday across the Rocky Mountains and then diving down into the Ohio Valley as we head into your Thursday. And I think by the time we get to Thursday into Friday, rain to snow looks likely, according to the GFS, across the Commonwealth. And there could be some heavy snow with that as that area of low pressure wraps up and that northwest wind really kicks in and then heads up the east coast. Now, it's the farthest south of the models, but the others have a different opinion on how things could play out. The Canadian model is a little bit further north than the GFS and a little bit uh, faster with the progression of the front. And notice it is heading farther north, so we don't get quite as much snow here into Kentucky with this run. And it pulls the system out with a little less fanfare as far as snow goes. And then we have the European model, which is the fastest of the models and actually splits the low into two pieces of energy with the primary low heading up the east coast and the secondary low heading further north with the lowest amount of snow from all the models. So here's how much the models are showing. The European has around one inches in eastern Kentucky, two inches in south central Kentucky, four to six inches in northern Kentucky, and even more along the Ohio River. And the Canadian model showing similar ideas, although a little bit different. Notice that big heavy swath back over towards Evansville and Owensboro, but still not the big hit that the models earlier in the week were showing. And the GFS is showing even lower totals than it was uh, earlier. In fact, much lower totals. But is it right? The truth of the situation is, right now, none of the models have a perfect grasp on what's going to happen with the storm system. We're just too far out. We're still four to five days from this storm forming and impacting Kentucky. And until the storm actually forms and gets over the observation network here in the United States, the details are going to remain a bit murky and we're going to see wild swings in the models every run leading up to the event. In fact, I don't think it'll be until Tuesday until we start to get a much clearer picture of how this system will play out. However, we can look at ensemble forecast models to try to see what the most likely scenario is. And in this case, we're looking at the GFS ensembles and looking at the potential for more than an inch of snow in 24 hours on Friday. And notice it's showing a very large chunk of the state and a high probability of that. So that is something we can kind of use as a basis for the forecast. We're seeing a little bit lower chances though when it comes to the Canadian model and also the European model. Notice they're down in the 30 to 50% range. So that shows that the ensemble, the overall spread of the models, it takes the model and runs it multiple times with different variations and gives you an average. It's showing that average is farther north than the GFS model. So that means there's disagreement in the models, which is not really surprising. We're not going to know the track of this storm until much closer to the event, and the track will mean everything when it comes to the impact. Now, one impact that all the models are agreeing on, though, is the bitter cold temperatures heading our way. In fact, the GFS showing air temperatures near or below zero for Saturday going into Sunday morning, and then wind chills even colder than that, maybe even pushing 15 to 20 below zero as we head into Christmas weekend. So at this point, I feel like a historic cold outbreak is looking very likely for Christmas weekend. And wind chills could be extremely dangerous. You need to make sure you have some backup heat sources in case the main power goes out and you're caught in the cold. 
As far as snow, still way too early to tell how much we'll see. We're going to have to wait till we get closer to the event, probably on Tuesday, to start getting a good idea. But I will say I feel overall confident that our chances of seeing a white Christmas are much better than average. Typically, we only have about a 10% chance. Right now, I would say most of the state of Kentucky is about a 40 to 50% chance. Now, will it be enough to impact travel, and when exactly does it hit? Those are some of the details we still have to work out. So that's all I have for right now, but I will continue tracking this storm and bring you the latest information as we get closer to the event. So if you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, please be sure to like and subscribe and also follow me on other social media channels. I'm meteorologist Shane Smith on Facebook. I'm Shane Smith Media on Twitter. And I hope that you guys will continue to check back in with the Bluegrass Weather Report as we watch the potential of some major winter weather leading up to Christmas here in Kentucky. Take care, and until next time, stay weather aware.